I'm going to talk about um, caves and cave life. Um, it's, a, it's a really unique environment. There's um, not much energy, and it's really stable. And it's sort of a microcosm of the whole world that we live in. Um, the problems that caves experience are like the rest of our problems. We think of caves as having stalactites and stalagmites, pretty formations, uh, typically in, in, formed in limestone. But they're actually a lot more complex than that. It's more than just a pretty place to go and, and visit. There's all sorts of passages that flow. The direction that water flows can be very different from the surface topography so that you can't really anticipate where a contaminant such as a leaking septic tank, where it might come out on the surface, making management difficult. And the cave is really just a, a window into the underground environment. We can see part of the cave and sample invertebrates there, which is the only thing anybody would ever want to do. But we can't see all those little spaces in there, where, which are huge passages, maybe connecting caves for the invertebrates. Um, we just don't know what's there. Um, caves are very stable, very dark. They have uh, their temperature is the average yearly temperature. The relative humidity is extremely high, often over 95%. And there's not much energy there. The organisms that are adapted to this environment uh, typically have lost pigment. They have reduced or, or lost their eyes. They have elongate appendages or bodies. Um, they have, if they're arthropods, thin cuticle because that helps. There's less of a problem with water loss. In the next few seconds, I will cover a whole series of projects very superficially. Um, those are cave crickets mating up there on the top. I'll talk about them right near the end. Um, this is a 263-mile, 3.5 billion, I think, uh, pipeline that has been proposed by the Southern Nevada Water Authority to pump groundwater from basins up near Great Basin National Park at the north there, where we recently described this eyeless cave amphipod known only from a single cave stream. Um, and on the next mountain range over there is another cave with undescribed invertebrates. And you can see at the bottom looking out towards that basin where the aquifer is that they're wanting to pump out. When you pump down that water, hydrogeological studies have suggested this could change the flow regime in the caves. How do we manage those narrowly endemic cave invertebrates in the face of this threat? With global warming, there's a cave in the same mountain range um, with this undescribed little tiny pseudoscorpion, eyeless thing. When it gets warmer, it can't move its cave. It has nowhere to go. Another example, in Belize, um, where there's clear cutting, that, that changes the organic input into the cave. It increases sedimentation. This um, fills in microhabitats where invertebrates such as this eyeless or nearly eyeless harvestmen live. How do we um, manage these resources? How do we work with the local people to um, perhaps find other ways of using the environment, maybe ecotourism? Here in Illinois, we've sampled caves and springs, looking at uh, fecal coliform counts, which are particularly high in caves and springs near St. Louis. And there's all sorts of disturbing names for bacteria in these caves. Um, how does this happen when people build homes in the rural rolling hills of Monroe County and they have septic tanks that aren't, aren't inspected often enough, those leak, that causes contaminants to go down into the groundwater. Often the rural people have uh, shallow groundwater wells. Living in the same place where the fecal coliform count is the highest is this federally listed uh, Illinois cave amphipod, which now is known only from Monroe County, the population in St. Clair County is extirpated. In Texas, 16 invertebrates are listed as endangered, spiders, beetles, and so forth in the area of Austin and San Antonio, where there's a lot of rapid growth. And managing these endangered species is related to this cave cricket, which forages on the surface at, at night and then roosts in the caves during the daytime. It's not endangered itself, but it provides most of the energy for these caves which don't have streams running in them or bats. You can see a colony of crickets roosting on the ceiling there. And those little pellets on the right are their guano. And there's uh, fungi and bacteria on that being browsed upon by millipedes and a springtail. The cricket lives in a cave in the middle of that little red preserve. It forages 120 meters. How do you protect that with all that urbanization? These are huge problems and all sorts of 
ideas there that maybe I can work with somebody on here. Thank you.